Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. In this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding news and we are starting with this physique update of Ian Valier where he's doing the back double bicep in which his shoulders are looking ridiculous, his arms as well I would have to say, his upper back does too but his lower back, I mean, this pose overall right here does look very good. But as far as that lower back, I mean, lower lats, where people are saying he has nerve damage, he's not really showing it because he's bending backwards a little bit too much. So that whole area is in a shadow, it's hidden, you can't really see it. But regardless, I do believe his back didn't look good on stage, nor were his other body parts because he did not peak properly. I don't think there is nerve damage going on. After the Mr. Olympia, based on what I saw on his Instagram, he went on a vacation and probably he ate a lot of food and he drank a lot of fluid and like a week after the Mr. Olympia, his body peaked because it was properly hydrated, it was completely carved up and if he looked like this on stage, he would, I'm not saying he would place higher, but he would look better for sure. His body came alive, you know, he rested a little, he had some food and some fluid and his body peaked actually a week after the Mr. Olympia, unfortunately for him, even in the side chest as you can see, because his chest is kind of his weakest body part, his chest looks good, it looks pretty big, pretty full, pretty round, unfortunately not when it was supposed to. And whose fault was this? Well, if you guys haven't seen my video about Ian explaining what went wrong, go ahead and watch it. Pretty much to sum it up, he blames it on his protocol. He made some mistakes with electrolyte manipulation, with dehydration, with carbing up. And of course, Ian is not the one that is writing those protocols. It is, of course, his coach. And his coach is Patrick Tour. And he has been working with Patrick Tour for a while. And this is the second time he completely failed. Now, this is something that Ian cannot afford. I mean, he's competing only once or twice a year. He did only one Coover Pro because it was an easy show to win, an easy qualification for the only show that matters for him, Mr. Olympia. He was seventh two years in a row and he wanted to jump places this year, but he failed because it seems like Patrick Tour, he's kind of like a hit or miss. I mean, he missed with uh, James Hollingshead completely last year. There is also that video of Dennis Wolf saying that Patrick Tour completely ruined him. He he messed up his peak week completely and he looked horrible at that one show. I started working with somebody else, Patrick Tour. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, I know he, Patrick, yeah. Yeah, he fucked me up completely. <laughs> Really, really. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a good. He's I was, got a. He's I got a. Look, I was carb loading for the New York Pro, and I was low sugar the whole two days. So wow. I was told, telling him, man, it's 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 not enough. He told me, yeah, on the plan, everything should be alright, but it's not on the plan, you know. I mean, you should look at me. Also, he was coaching Ben Chow, who is coaching Hunter Labrada right now. And if you guys remember, Ben Chow ended up in a hospital like two weeks before the show. He somehow managed to still compete after that, but he basically almost died uh, while he was coached by Patrick Tour. So I feel like Ian kind of got everything out of Patrick Tour that he could. I don't think Patrick can help him anymore. So based on this comment right here, I'm thinking, did this guy start working with Honey Rambert? It could be, it's completely possible that maybe just Honey and Ian became friends over Chris or maybe they just like each other on social media and for whatever reason Honey commented on his photo but, I mean guys, come on, Honey Rambert, the best coach in the world if he was helping Ian for this year's Mr. Olympia Ian would definitely not miss his peak that would not happen, Ian is well aware of that and Ian has a coach, Patrick Tour. Would Honey comment like this being the best coach in the world if he wasn't coaching Ian? I don't think so. Maybe he would send him a DM, but commenting under a photo, a physique update photo, I'm not so sure. Also, I was watching Fuad Abiyad's podcast in which Ian seems to be really admiring Honey Rambert's coaching abilities. Let me show you this. Let me show you how much Ian admires Honey Rambert and you can decide for yourself how much do you think he wants to be coached by Honey. You know, that, that peak that Honey does, man, is just like absolute fucking perfection. Like all those guys have that same kind of like Honey-esque look of just like 
it's not even like a dryness it's like a hardness like a marble slab hardness you know i know, I know. like it's everything's just pulled together that fullness and conditioning balance is so imperfectly balanced you know so yeah i mean it's pretty clear i think it's pretty clear that ian would love to be coached by honey unfortunately the word is out there that honey is only working with his athletes with evogen nutrition athletes not with just everybody chris bumstead however was an exception and i don't think he would make another exception for ian valier but maybe maybe who knows maybe Han really enjoyed working with these athletes i mean having two guys in the top two at the mr olympia and classic physique champion maybe he wants to work with more guys but he already has two guys in the open does he need another one i don't think he needs to do this but maybe chris asked him for a favor i don't know but this comment makes me wonder it makes me speculate of course this is all speculation i have no inside info or anything like that it just kind of looks like it and let's be honest guys Patrick Tour is a great coach, but if Ian was coached by Hani Rambert at the Mr. Olympia, he would not miss his peak, and that one day, that one show was the only one that mattered for Ian last year, and I don't think he can afford missing peaks like that anymore, so I'm pretty sure he's going to stop working with Patrick Tour, we'll see, maybe not, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna do that, it would make sense, what do you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Check this out guys, Anno Reactor by the Old School Labs Vintage Burst, check out these ingredients, so if you guys want something that is not super strong like a pre-workout but you want to have a good workout, a good pump, Vintage Burst is just a thing for you, as you can see it has a whole bunch of extracts, all plant based and as you can see it has some caffeine so it's gonna help you focus a little bit more and help you have a good pump without a lot of strong ingredients, a lot of strong stimulants, so guys if you wanna try it out, link is down below use the code even for a 15 percent discount and if you guys are enjoying my content and you want me to keep making these videos this is a great way to support me by buying one of the old school lab supplements and using the code even thank you guys so much all right next we have nick walker with a physique update two weeks after the mr olympia saying that his goal right now is to stay as lean as possible while still packing on the tissue so as you can see he still wants to get bigger he still wants to put more muscle on which he can i'm sure he will and he says he wants to put it on the right places and he wants to keep his waist in check so he is aware that his waist needs to be controlled carefully last year when he was working with dom super sliced based on what dom said they were doing all kinds of stuff to ensure that his waist doesn't get bigger or ideally get smaller and what dom said is that his waist actually went down i think an inch and a half which is a lot you know because he grew he grew in the off season. however nick didn't really stay that lean you know he got i wouldn't say he got fat but he did get a little bit chubby a little bit too watery he did not stay uh, very very lean like he always stays with matt jensen so they were probably pushing a lot more food than what uh, nick has been doing so far and for that reason it seems like he made some progress but he he looked like it he looked like he gained a lot of weight he did actually gain a lot of weight he was like 300 pounds i think even a little bit over at some point he was humongous but when he dieted down there were some changes visible but it wasn't crazy like he did lose a lot of weight and you know eventually he looked pretty similar to what he looked like last year i think his conditioning was a little bit worse this year maybe his arms were a little bit bigger i think his back was also better but overall he did not make as much progress as we thought he would but if he actually stays super lean and I'm sure Nick has the genetics to grow, even while he's very, very lean. I think, I think that is the way to actually look much bigger next year. If he does this approach with Matt Jensen throughout the entire off season, and then he does prep with Matt as well, and he picks properly like he did this year, I think we can expect a big change from Nick next year. And if he changes, if he actually improves, if his way somehow gets a little bit smaller and he grows a little bit more in certain areas not arms definitely not arms if he grows some chest some delts and i would say mainly his legs if he grows his quads a little bit more 
you know, he can win the Mr. Olympia. I wouldn't be too surprised. Or if one of the two guys that have beaten him this year slips a little, comes not 100% on, maybe he can edge them out. They are coached by Honey Rambo though, so it's not very likely to happen, but you know, I'm pretty sure Matt Jensen is going to pick Nick properly as well, so I'm expecting something crazy from Nick next year, and right now he does look very good, unfortunately he is not doing the Arnold Classic, unfortunately for us, but for his career I think it's the right decision, he has enough time to get healthy, to make progress, and to actually challenge both Harry Chopin and Derek Lansford next year. I'm sure all of you guys heard at this point that Samson Dauda is going to be competing at the Arnold Classic, I wasn't so sure if this was gonna happen because, yeah, I know Milos is all about doing as many shows as possible and it does make sense because, as I said, officially Nick Walker is not doing the show, I don't think Brandon is gonna be doing it again this year, he did it last year, I don't see Big Ramy doing the Arnold Classic, he wants to regain his Olympia title and Hadi, of course, Hadi won the Mr. Olympia, he doesn't wanna do the Arnold Classic and I don't think Derek is gonna do it either, but who knows. Right now, out of that top 6, I think only Samson is going to be doing the Arnold Classic and he has a big chance of winning. Even if somebody like Brandon Kerr decides to jump in or, I don't know, Derek Lansford, I still think Samson has a chance. If he makes a little bit more progress, if he comes with a little bit better conditioning, and I'm sure he can do that. I've seen Milos Charchev make crazy changes with his athletes and I've seen Samson progress a lot between those shows that were like uh, 6 months apart. There isn't really six months between the Mr. Olympia and the Arnold Classic, more like four months, but still, he still has enough time to make progress, and with his crazy frame and structure, I think he has an actual chance of winning the Arnold Classic, and if he wins the Arnold Classic, then he is coming strong to the Mr. Olympia, and if he makes some more progress, then, and I'm sure he will, you know, he can be like one of the top three guys at the Mr. Olympia, I wouldn't be too surprised. But as for right now, he has all the tools necessary to win the Arnold Classic, he is my favorite. Samson has that look that Arnold Schwarzenegger actually likes. You guys remember how much Arnold was cheering for Cedric McMillan, he wanted Cedric to win that Arnold Classic, he did not want Kai to be winning it, he wanted a more classic looking physique, and Samson, just like Cedric, is a taller guy, has very beautiful physique, small waist, crazy look, classic lines, he has all what Arnold is looking for, so I think he's ideal a competitor to win the Arnold Classic, not Derek Lansford, not Brandon Curry again, I think Arnold would love it if Samson won it, he also poses really really well, he's an artist, so I think he fits this so well, and he's my favorite to win the Arnold Classic, whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section, for more bodybuilding content like this, guys, please subscribe to my channel, it would mean a lot to me, thank you so much for watching, all the best guys, and bye bye.